What if I told you using the asterisk or the question mark, you can make Excel formulas smarter? This applies to many formulas, including sum ifs, xlookup, index match, and even the filter tool. So let me show you what I mean with six practical examples. In this first example, suppose that we want to find out how many of these emails end in gmail.com. So we're going to put equals, and you might think of using the count if function. That could be a good start. The range are all of the email addresses over here, comma, and as the criteria, in quotations, you might think of just putting at gmail.com. Close those quotations and close the parenthesis. That seems fairly sensible, but it actually returns a zero. That's because even though we have at gmail.com here for Anna, we have the Anna part, and so therefore it's not an exact match. What you can do instead is just double click inside of this area again, and just add an asterisk at the start. With that, you can see that it's now counting for the have Gmail. That asterisk basically says to ignore if there is any text before the at gmail.com, and that's also known as a wildcard or a partial match. Now let's take a look at another example where it says how many Anas do we have over here in the email area. You'll recall here we added the asterisk at the very start, whereas in this one we might need to do this slightly differently. So I'm gonna go count if, this is the whole range again, and as the criteria we want to have Anna. That said, we have some words after Anna, so we can just put a asterisk over here, close those quotations, and close the parenthesis. Now you'll notice that we get the first Anna right over here, and the very last one down below too. Alright, we've seen how to use an asterisk at the start and at the end, so let's see if we can actually combine it. So for instance, we want to verify which of these are actual email addresses, and for that we must require that it has an at in the middle. So for this we can go ahead and check it with equals count if again, and this is our range, comma, and as the criteria in quotations, we would just need to put an at sign, but we want a partial match, so we want to put an asterisk, at asterisk again, so that it can ignore text before or text after, close those quotations, and close that parenthesis, and you'll notice that we have 8 as Tom over here, as well as Lee down below, don't actually fit the criteria. Awesome, now that you understand the basic syntax of the asterisk, let's take a look at the question mark next. Over here we have the file, and we want to find out which of these are standard size counts. So by that it's saying which of these shirts are standard size. So that would be an S, M, or L, but not an XL, XXL, etc. For that we can use equals count if again. Hit the tab key there, the range is all of our sizes, comma, and as a criteria in quotations, we just want to have a single digit. So that would basically have one question mark. That's all we need there. Close up parenthesis and hit enter. It's really that simple. And instead of one digit, we want to see which of these are oversized or undersized, like XL, XS, etc. So we would just need to change that criteria to instead of one digit, two digits. And you would do that with that second question mark. Great, and you can probably start to see that the asterisk is for multiple characters, while the question mark is for a single character. Before we look at more advanced formulas, you should know that the asterisk and the question mark also work for the find and replace tools. Let me show you what I mean over here. So you can see we have some data with some codes, product name, category, and unit sold. For the codes over here, suppose we only want to find those that have three digits. So let's say AC-7. Technically, that's four digits, but I think you get what I mean. These two would fit, whereas this one up above wouldn't. So we're going to go over to find and replace over here. So we can click on find. And within this area, what do we want to find? Well, we want to find two characters, a dash and a further character like this. And for that, we can click on find all. You'll notice that that opens up this whole drop down down over here, where it's finding all of the areas where that's the case. The problem is, it's also finding some that aren't necessarily within the code area, so you'll notice we have this part right here, simply because it has a dash in the middle and two characters or more in front and one or more at the end. So instead, we're gonna take on match entire cell contents, find all again, and you'll notice now it's filtered exactly by those that have this criteria. Once you identify these, you can easily replace them just by going over to the replace tool on the side and change them to whatever you want in here. If we went back to the original table that we have down here, we can just press Ctrl Shift L to open up these dropdowns. So this is basically the filter tool 
and we can also use the asterisk and the question mark in here as the search part so I can for instance look for anything that's with an F. The problem is that it also adds things that are, have an F halfway through like the food here or the office down below. If I only want it to start with an F I can just add an asterisk after that and you'll notice that filters out all the other options and simply gives me fitness. Admittedly, these are still some basic use cases, but you'll be pleased to know that they also work for more complex formulas like XLOOKUP or index match. Let me show you right here with this example, where you'll notice we have all of these file IDs and the file names. In this scenario, we want to find which finish with .pdf. So we'll do an XLOOKUP in here. As the lookup value, we'll put in quotations .pdf but need to add an asterisk as it can have some data ahead of that or in front of that. So we're going to put an asterisk right here, close up those quotations, comma. Where can we find this .pdf part? Well, we can find it in the file names like this. And what do we want returned? The PDF file ID. So it's going to be this ID area to the side. One important thing though, you can't just go ahead and hit enter. You'll notice that doesn't actually work. And that's because we need to go ahead and change the match mode. So we're going to put comma again. If not found, we can just ignore this part for now. So put another comma. But for the match mode, we want it to be a wildcard character match. So that's a two. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. And you'll notice that's not working correctly as this first one is indeed .pdf and that's F001. If I were to change this to DOX, let's say, then you'll notice it goes down all the way to number six, which is also in PDF as the first one isn't. So it only picks out the very first one. That said, I'll show you later how to pick out multiple, as in this case, we have multiple with PDF. Before we go over those advanced use cases, if you're liking this video and you want to learn more, I'd recommend you check out our range of courses, which include Excel, Power BI, finance and valuation, and more, as well as a range of bundle packages. And what makes our courses different is that they're all applied to the real world. So aside from teaching the theory, our lessons also offer case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from creating a financial model from scratch on Excel, to creating a PL dashboard on Power BI, on the way to making a professional pitch deck presentation in PowerPoint. So if you're interested in checking this out, head over to the link in the description below. All right, back to the video. One of the scenarios where the XLOOKUP doesn't work very well is when we have two criteria. Like in this case, suppose we're looking for a product that's a red color and that's also in Asia. So for this, we're gonna actually use an index match with an asterisk. So as the index, the array is basically where are our answers. So we're looking for the price of these products which is this whole middle area, comma. And now we're gonna use the first match as the row match. The lookup value is we're looking for red shoes. So in quotations, we're gonna put a red, but remember we need to add the asterisk. So let's actually add one in front and at the very end, just in case. Close those quotations. The lookup array is where can we find it within this whole area right here. And the match type, we want it to be an exact match. We can close the parentheses, so that's one side done with the red color, but we want it to be in Asia, so let's work on that second side. So that's gonna be another match. Lookup value is we're looking for anything Asia, so in quotations, I'll put Asia. Because Asia Pacific is some words that are after, we're gonna add an asterisk at the end here. Close those quotations, comma. Lookup array, where can we find it? So it's this area up top, comma and we want it to be an exact match. We can then close this parenthesis for the match and now close it again for the index. Hit enter here and when it's red and it's in Asia, it gives us a total of 92. Awesome, but much like the XLOOKUP that we saw earlier, we have the same problem with the index match where it only finds the very first match and it ignores all the other ones. So let me show you what formula to use instead in a scenario like the one we've seen before where we have multiple .pdfs. So over here where it says PDF file ID, we'll start typing first with the search function. Hit the tab key in here. So what are we looking for? We're looking for a text which is .pdf. Close those quotations, comma. Within which area? So it's gonna be within this part right here where we can find it. 
We can then close the parentheses and hit enter to see what this is doing. Basically, it's identifying which character does the .pdf start. So over here, it's a shorter text, so it starts at character number 10. Whereas this one that's a bit longer, let's say, starts at number 16. But obviously, this on its own looks very bad and is hard to interpret. So actually, we'll put is number in front. This way, it's going to return true or false depending on whether it's a number. All right, so we've gotten this far and now we're going to use the filter function on top of this. So we're going to put filter in here, hit the tab key. As the array, we want to select whatever we want as the answer. So in our case, it's the file IDs right here, comma. The include is fine as is and we just need to close the parenthesis at the very end. Hit enter and now it's found the three different file IDs that have .pdf at the very end. And what's great about the filter is that you can further customize it. So instead of selecting this whole B3 to B12 area, so that's only the ID. If you want the answer to also include the file name, all you need to do is extend that out just like that. Hit enter and it extends it out with the name as well. The main downside to the filter function is that the asterisk or the question mark don't work within it. So for instance, if we tried over here, I just typed filter. The array is all of the file IDs that I want as the answer. And I want them to be included whenever this part right here is equals to in quotations asterisk.pdf. Let's go ahead and close that and see what happens. You'll notice that it gives me an error. That's why we had to use the workaround of adding the is number and the search inside. If the asterisk and the question mark still don't give you enough flexibility, the level above that are regex functions, which you can learn with this video over here, or you can take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.